Welcome students to our walkthrough of the Highgate 11 plus paper B for mathematics. In this video, we will guide you through the various sections of the paper, providing step-by-step -step explanations and strategies to tackle each question. So whether you're preparing for the Highgate school entrance exam or simply looking to enhance your mathematical skills, this walkthrough is designed to help you succeed. So let's dive into the world of numbers and problem solving. Question number one. Some animals are being sold at a pet shop. Hamsters cost £7.50 each and gerbils cost £3.20 each. Javier buys four hamsters and three gerbils. So how much did Javier spend in total? So first of all, we'll have £7.50 and we'll times that by four. That gives us £30. And then £3.20 times by three, and that gives us £9.60. We'll then add that together and get £39.60. Part B. Goldfish are kept in large tanks, and each tank can hold up to 13 fish. There are 193 fish in total. So how many tanks are needed to hold all of these goldfish? So all we need to do is 193, divide that by 13. Again, we know that 14 times 13 is 182. So we'll have 14 here, 182 here. Subtract that away. And again, as you can see, we've got 11 left. But 13 doesn't go into 11. So we'll have a remainder, of course. So we can put that as 0.8. So we'll have 15 in total because you cannot have 0.8 of tanks. If you need to, pause the video at any given time, attempt the question, and then press play when you're ready to do so. Alrighty, marvellous work. Part C. Chickens and chicks all have two wings. There are eight chickens in the shop, so instantly that's 16 wings. And each of these eight chickens have five chicks. So in total, eight times five is 40. So that's 40 in total, remember that. And then again, if they have two wings each, times it by two, and that's 80. So now we have the five chicks, which are 80, and the eight chickens, which have 16 wings. Add that together, and that's 96 wings in total. Part D. Seven cat bowls cost the same as four dog leads. And three cat bowls cost 72 pounds. So again, 72 divided by three is 24 pounds, and that's for one cat bowl. Now we have this information. We know that we're gonna multiply 24 by seven, and that again would give us 168 pounds. And now we know that 168 pounds is equal to four dog leads. So ultimately, we'll divide that by four, and we get 42 pounds, and that is our answer. 42 pounds for one dog lead. So again, what have I done? I've gone ahead and calculated one cat bowl. I've then multiplied that by seven. The reason being is that seven cat bowls equal four dog leads, and then divided it by four to get the value of one dog lead. Beautiful. Let's go for part E. The shop has a sale on stick insects. If you buy three stick insects, you get a fourth stick insect free. So Ahmed paid £17.85 for 20 insects. What is the cost of one stick insect? So all we need to merely do is go ahead and understand that for every three, he gets a fourth free. So if he buys three, he gets four. If he buys six, what does he get? Eight. As you can see, it's a three times table. If he gets nine, he gets 12. And that's because for every three, he gets one extra. So if you're timesing this by three, you'd have to times this by three. So in total, he's got 20 insects. So again, let's keep going. For 12, again, we have to times that by four. So we times four by four, and that's 16. But remember here that he gets 20 insects. So in total, we need to get 20 insects. And as you can see, we've got six and nine because eight and 12 gives us 20. 
So what is the cost of one stick insect? So all we need to do here is go ahead and add six and nine, which gives us 15, and then 17 pound 85 divided by 15, and that gives us one pound 19. So now we know the value of one stick insect is one pound 19. And remember this row here is what he pays for, and this is what he gets at the end. And that's again, having one free. Marvelous. Question two. In a charity fun run, one sixth of the runners were adults and the rest were children. So we know that's five over six. There were 120 adults in the race. So you now know one sixth equals 120. So how many children were there? Well, instantly, in order to get five over six, we have to times by five, and 120 times by five will give us 600, and 600 is our answer. Marvellous. Tickets to enter a fairground cost seven pounds for adults and three pounds for children. Once inside the fairground, each ride costs three pounds for adults and one pound 50 for children. So Joe and his two grandchildren go to the fairground. So again, we've got Joe and his two grandchildren. So instantly, we have seven pound for Joe plus two grandchildren is three pound each. So that's a two multiplied by three pounds. And again, that gives us 13 pound for entry. So remember, it's three pound each for each ride. So again, he goes on two rides. So that's six pounds here for Joe. And Peter goes on four times as many rides as Amy. And now if the total spend is 34 pounds between them, how many rides did Peter go on? So instantly we've got 13 and six, so that's 19 pounds. So if we have 34 minus 19 pounds, what do we get here? We get 15 pounds. So that means that the two grandchildren, Amy and Peter, spend 15 pounds in total. But again, Peter has four, whilst Amy has one. So now we can total up as five in total, five parts. So 15 is the total amount, divide it by five, that gives us three pounds. So we know whilst Amy is three pounds, which is again seen as two rides, as one ride is one pound 50, then we're gonna times that by four, and that's 12 pounds for Peter. And again, that's going to be eight rides in total. And that again is four times. So we now know that the answer to part B is eight rides. So once again, pause the video at any given time, attempt the question and then press play to see if you've got the same value. Again, there is an element of ratio. So please go ahead and watch the ratio video if you need a bit more practice and then come back to this video here. Right, let's move over to part C. A watch shop has a two day winter sale. On the first day, two thirds of all watches are sold. And on the second day, a quarter of the remaining watches are sold. Now the shop sold 72 watches on the first day. So now we know two thirds equals 72. So how would we calculate three thirds? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna divide 72 by two, and that will give us 36, which equals one third, and then times it by three to get us 108. So now we know that we had 108 watches in total, but only two thirds were sold, which was 72. And then if we have 108 minus 72, we obviously have 36 left over. So on the second day, a quarter of the remaining were sold. So a quarter of 36 equals nine. So how many watches were sold on the second day? And there we are, we have nine watches, as that is a quarter of the remaining watches, which was 36. Marvelous. Part D. A rectangle is split into two smaller rectangles, labeled A and B. Rectangle A is shaded. One seventh of the original rectangle is shaded. So we know that's one seventh. With scissors, I cut off and remove a third of rectangle B. What fraction of the remaining shape is now shaded? 
Well, in order to get the remaining, we're simply going to have a seventh plus one minus a seventh. And we're going to multiply this by one minus a third. And we now know that the shaded area is one over seven. Therefore, if we take a look at this in a ratio format between the shaded and the remaining, we're simply going to have one seventh to a ratio of one over seven plus six over seven multiplied by two over three, because two third is what is remaining after the one third has been cut off. And six sevenths is what is remaining after the one seventh has been cut off. And that there gives us 1 over 7 plus 4 over 7. And remember, this is in the ratio of 1 over 7. So we now know that that's going to be 1 over 7 to 5 over 7. Again, we can eliminate the 7s, which is the denominator, and that is seen as 1 over 5. I hope that was clear. Let's move over to question 3. So a bag contains 600 sweets, and the sweets are either red, blue, or green. There are eight more red sweets than blue sweets, and 30% of the sweets are blue. So how many sweets are green? Well, we know we need to work out 30% of the sweets that are blue. We know 10% is 60, so 60 times 3 is 180. So we know there's 180 blue sweets. And there are eight more red sweets than blue sweets. So again, in order to get the red sweets, we add eight on top, and that's 188. So now we're left with calculating the green here. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract these values from each other. So we now know that we have 600 minus 180, which is your blue, and 188, which is your red, and that gives us 232, and that is how many green sweets we have. Okay. In a sale, the price of a toy car is reduced by 40%. I buy the toy car for £42, but what did it cost before the sale? So that means the value must have been higher. So what I'm going to do is calculate £42 as 60%, because it's been reduced by 40 And I need to calculate the value before the sale, which is 100% of the value. So what am I going to do here? Well, I'm going to go ahead and find out 10%, and that's 42 divided by 6, and that gives us 10%, which is £7. So I'll just write that down. And then I'll times it by 10, and that'll be £70 for 100%, and that is my answer. And part C. Fido the dog ate 16 pork sausages and 24 lamb sausages. So what percentage of Fido's sausages were lamb? Well, we know there's 24, and we know in total there's 40. So we'll have 24 divided by 40, which gives you 0 0.6, and that's the same as 60%. And so that is your answer. And for part D, Jack and Jill are buying chocolates in a chocolate shop. Jack bought six chocolate frogs and five truffles for £9.55. And Jill bought three chocolate frogs and three truffles for £5.25. So how much does a chocolate frog cost and how much does a truffle cost? So again, this is a very common question that you'd receive in the exam. And this is called a simultaneous question. So what I want you to do is pause the video if you haven't already and dive into the simultaneous equations video or just keep a link for that, which you should see on the screen now. And then once you've familiarized yourself with that topic, then come back and answer this question. Or even so, if you're ready for the challenge, let's listen right away. So the first thing we're going to do is label these as equation one and equation two. Our next aim is to make either the chocolate frogs the same or the truffles the same. I'll go ahead and make the chocolate frogs the same. So I'll have to multiply this by two, which gives us 6x plus 6t which equals £10.50. And then as equation 2 is now larger than equation 1, I'm going to subtract equation 1 from the new equation 2. So 6f and 6f is nothing, but 6t take away 5t gives us t, 
and £10.50 take away £9.55 gives us 95p. So we now know the value of the truffle is 95 pence. And then we can go ahead and substitute that value into the original equation, whether it's one or two. Let's go for substituting it in equation two. So we now know that we have three chocolate frogs plus three truffles. So again, three times 95 pence is £2.85. And now I'm going to get £5.25 and subtract £2.85, and that gives me £2.40. So I'm just going to write that out here. And that equals for three chocolate frogs. So again, if I divide that by three, I have 80 pence as one chocolate frog, and that is my answer. Beautiful. Okay, part E. An artist mixes red, yellow, and white paint to create a new shade of orange. Two-fifths of the mixture is yellow. And the artists use three times as much as red paint as white paint. And that again is red to white. So in total, the artist mixes 180 milliliters of orange paint. So how much red paint does the artist need? Well, we now know that we have three-fifths left, and that is mixed between red and white. And that shows us that the four is equal to three-fifths. So we now need to divide three over five by four. If you remember, we have a keep it, change it, flip it method. So let's zoom into this. We'll keep three-fifths as it is. We'll change divide to multiply and we'll flip that to a quarter, where at the moment it was four over one, but now it's one quarter. Multiply that out, and that's three over 20. So we now know the value of one ratio is three over 20, but we need three, as it's asking us for the red paint. So three multiplied by three over 20 is nine over 20. So we need nine over 20 of 180. So again, what do we do? We take our double step method, which is 180 divided by 20, which is our denominator. And that gives us nine. And then nine times the numerator, which is 81. And that is our answer. 81 milliliters of red paint was needed. Again, don't forget to pause the video at any point in time, answer the question, and then come back to see if this is what you got. Marvellous. Let's go for question four. James has 15 sweets in his pocket. He has seven red, six blue, and two pink sweets. So without looking, he removes some sweets from his pocket and places them on the table. Now, what is the smallest number of sweets he should remove to guarantee that he has at least one sweet of each colour? So in order to answer this question, what they're asking here is what is the smallest number of sweets he should remove to guarantee that he has at least one sweet of each color on the table? I understand it could slightly come across as a trick question, but the answer would be 14. And the reason we get 14 is because we're looking for the smallest number of sweets he should remove. And because we have two pink, we want to have at least one sweet of each color. So by removing one from pink, that gives us seven, six, and one, which gives us 14 in total. And there we are. Brilliant work. Let's go ahead and dump, dive into part B. Four identical rectangles are joined together to form a large rectangle, as shown below. The area of the larger rectangle is 192 centimeters squared. So find the length of the side labeled X. Well, that just means x times this length here gives you 192. So let's go ahead and understand this a little bit better. So if we take a look at the left-hand side here, we have three widths, which equal to one x, essentially. So what we're going to do is label this as your width, your width, and your width. And then we'll also label this section as width as well. So if we know that three w's equal one width, then we could have three w here. 
So we now know that's four Ws in total. But we want to calculate what three Ws are worth. So what we will do is we'll have 192 divided by 4, which gives you 48. We'll then times that by 3, and that gives us 144. So what does that tell you here? It tells us that our value of x times x will be 144. So now if we go ahead and square root that answer, that gives us 12. So we now know that x equals 12 centimeters. Let's go ahead and prove it now. So we'll have x, which is 12. We'll have x here, which is 12. And then because we know that three widths are the same as 12, we just have 12 divided by three, which is four. So in that case, we then have 12 and four, which is 16. So this entire distance will be 16. And if we have 16 multiplied by 12, this gives us 192. And that proves the side labeled X is 12 centimeters. Marvelous. So part C. Karen wants to find the value of these numbers added together. Rather than just doing the calculation, she notices that she can reorder the numbers in a clever way. And she does this because 1 plus 10, 2 plus 9, 3 plus 8 all add up to 11. So her sum simplifies to 11 plus 11, so and so, which equals 55. So when working with a question like this, writing the sequence out would take way too long. And we'd probably injure ourselves in the process. And who wants that, right? But we should have picked up some clues about how we can approach this one from the last problem. Now, the sequence started at 1 last time and ended at 10. Likewise with ours, we're starting at 1, but we're ending at 20, meaning there's 20 numbers. And when we add the outermost numbers together and work our way in, each time it gives us the same sum, right? So each pair of numbers will always give us 1 plus 20, which is 21 numbers. So how many pairs are there in the sequence? Well, there's an odd number of numbers, right? And it doesn't make perfect sense to say that there would be 21 and a half pairs, or shall I say 11 and a half pairs. So it doesn't make perfect sense to say there would be 20 and a half pairs, though we could just recognize that half of a pair is half of a pair's value. But what else can we do about that? Well, let's use algebra here, where in this case, we'll have n as 20, and the sum of the first and the last terms in the sequence was 21, which is one more than our value for n. So then we write n plus 1. And that's the sum of the outer terms. And we know we have to divide the number of numbers by 2, because we're pairing the terms off, right? Just like 1 plus 10, 2 plus 9. So what we will write down is n bracket n plus 1 divided by 2. So remember here now, we're going to plug in the numbers. We have 20, 20 plus 1 divided by 2, which would then give us 20 multiplied by 21 divided by 2. And so what does that give us? Well, we know 20 times 21 is 420 divided by 2 gives us 210. And that is our answer. And that is a shortcut to working out Karen's method. Marvellous. Let's go for the final question now. So Tina is an athlete and she is completing a difficult training session. Her coach makes her run five metres forward and then five metres back and then 10 metres forward and 10 metres back and so on. And this continues until she has run 100 metres forward and 100 metres back. So how far does Tina run in total? Well, let's take a look. So in total, we know that we just need to double our amount every time, right? So when she's reading, so when she's running five meters forward and five meters back, we just double our number. So five would become 10, then 10 would become 20, then 15 would become 30, and so and so. But what's the shortcut here? How far does Tina run in total? So in order to find the total distance that Tina runs, 
we're going to use the Gauss technique. And that is just based off of the mathematician. Now, we can observe that the distances forward and backwards form an arithmetic progression, similar to part C. The arithmetic progression starts at 5 meters with a common difference of 5 meters and ends at 100 meters. So I'm going to just rub out what I had written out firstly. Now we're going to use a specific formula for the sum of the arithmetic progression. And that is going to be the sum of the progression. So we'll put S as sum. And N is seen as the number of terms. Right? And we'll have number of terms divided by 2. And then we're going to have A as our first term. And L as our last term. So in this case, our first term was 5. And the last term is 100. But now we need to find out the number of terms. So we're going to use a formula to find the number of terms. So we'll have L, which equals A plus N minus 1 multiplied by D, where D is our difference. And in this case, we can say D is 5 meters. Right? So all we need to do here is solve for N. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, we're going to finish off with 100. And we know that's 5 plus N minus 1. And our difference is D, which in this case was actually 5, wasn't it? So we can say times by 5. So if we go ahead and take that 5 over, we're left with 95, which equals N minus 1 times by 5. But then again, if we take the 5 over, that becomes divided by 5. So we have 19 equals N minus 1 and N equals 20. So now we know that the number of terms was 20. Again, we could have done that by starting off at 5, finishing off at 100, and knowing that 5 times 20 is 100. But now let's substitute the values into the sum formula. So what will that be? Well, that will be the sum, which equals 20 divided by 2 times by 5 plus 100. Remember, 5 is the beginning term and 100 is the last term. So that gives us 10 multiplied by 105. And that's 1,050 meters. But since she runs the distance forward and backward, that's twice the sum. So you take 1,050, you times it by 2, and we get 2,100 meters, and that is your answer. So Tina runs a total distance of 2,100 meters. Marvellous work. And there you have it, the conclusion of our walkthrough for the Highgate 11 plus paper B for mathematics. We hope that this video has provided you with valuable insights and techniques to approach similar questions in the future. Remember, practice and persistence are key to mastering mathematics. If you found this walkthrough useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more educational content. Best of luck with your studies and upcoming exams. Keep up the great work and we'll see you in the next video.